Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, so we're on day <laughs> six or seven. I, I, I've lost count of our two hour build and, uh, and we're to uh, squaring the machine, okay? And uh, it's been revised. We go look at it over here on um, page 68. You will need a 10 millimeter wrench in addition to the 8 millimeter wrench. Okay. I'm not exactly sure why, but okay. And uh, additional no change. Confirm tension of V wheels. Use a 10 mil wrench to tension the V wheels of the Z plus. Okay. Okay. So first we're going to confirm the tension of the V wheels. Been following along with um, uh, the videos. You know, we, we've done this already on the Y1 and Y2, but we didn't do it on. X carriage. <laughs> Sorry, I keep forgetting the name of these things. The process is pretty easy. You just kind of come over here or see if you can spin the wheel, right? Now they don't say, oops, sorry, they don't say what's too tight, but I do believe if I'm looking at this nut right, that is loosened up as far as it's going to loosen up. It's oblong. So uh, yeah, you can see the, the bolt is towards the bottom. I'm guessing that's moving this wheel down towards the bottom, which it's pulling it away from the x-axis or the x-rail i mean we couldn't loosen that up but it's definitely tight enough i can yeah you can you can see i can roll move the whole carriage with that so let's go check the other side over here yeah see see how it moves hopefully you can see how it moves okay so that one needs to be tightened so we come over here now the instructions didn't say but it did earlier in the previous instructions on adjusting them is uh you, you turn these things oh well, you can't get a socket on that i mean the box didn't on it you can only turn these things clockwise if you turn them counterclockwise you'll unscrew them if you think you got it too tight then you just have to keep going around and uh and i'm not sure <laughs> what would happen if you over tightened it these wheels are plastic you're liable to break it so just be careful so i'm just going to give it a little bit of a there you go Okay, so now you can see, yeah, see it, it's definitely engaged, and it, and so, and I can roll it freely, right, you know, if it felt like it was in a bind, then it would be different, right, but it, it rolls, well, as freely as it can, right, it's got, it's got this uh, stepper motor, that belt's running over, and that sort of thing, but yeah, what causes the, the misadjustment in these things is you put this belt on, you tighten it down, <laughs> And it basically it, it pulls down on the carriage and and uh, the wheels on the bottom get loose. And if you didn't see the previous videos, you do the exact same thing for the Y1 carriage and the Y2 carriage. But I've already done that in the previous video, so I'm not going to repeat it. Okay, confirm level. Uh, the base frame assembly was initial leveled. You can read it. They just want you to level it. So they want you to put the level across this way, across this way. You know, a couple places, they just, just make sure it's level. I guess I can show you a few shots, but uh, I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you know how to use a builder's level. Okay, so got the level on there. You can see it's, yeah, it's pretty level. I like that. Since we have our, our nice bench, it's probably not going to move around too much. How's that look? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, got it. So it's crossway one ways, crossway another ways. Um, how does that look? Uh oh, oh, I got some ah, cheap ones. Oh, there we go. I still have some bubbles. Uh, anyway, you can see uh, most of the bubbles are level in there. Yeah, cheap. <laughs> well, you probably don't want to see me play with my cheap level so I'll just check it real quick and you can just take my word for it I'll have it level and you know how to level it obviously you just use these leveling feet if you need to you can see I have mine adjusted a little bit <laughs> my shop floor is not very level and I'm really hoping that this whole leveling business is just to get it just to get the the squareness lined up so we can um square the machine and then once it's squared it won't matter if it's you know on a little bit of an incline on the floor otherwise i'll have to take my wheels off and permanently stick it somewhere which i don't really want to do
Okay, so I've got the machine nice and level. So, okay, so now I'll step. There we at, where are we at? Uh, oh, okay, so we confirmed the level. So now we're uh, squaring the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and read this. I, I read it earlier and, and this is where the verbiage is, <laughs> is good and necessary. So it says on the final step in assembly is to ensure the X rail and Y rail are perpendicular to each other and that the Y1 and Y2 rails are parallel to each other. Okay, so so using the four millimeter hex key, you don't need to tell what tell us what size it is, just loosen the eight screws uh, securing the X rail to the Y1 and Y2 carriages. I had to read that twice. I was like, why would I want to loosen these, right? Because that's what they're talking about. Uh, if you remember, we already left all these, these screws have never been tightened, right? The, the ones holding the base plate, the base MDF down. And if I remember correctly, we didn't tighten these up either. These are all still loose. Yeah, uh, granted, I, I, I don't remember tighten, I don't think we tightened them up. So um, actually that's a, that's an interesting point when I go to tighten them up, it's probably gonna change the, the belt tension. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't remember tightening these up in that step. Cause I, I remember I kept saying, yeah, you know, we're gonna come back and square everything so you won't leave everything loose. Basically, they wanna loosen all eight screws holding the X rail, this thing right here, to both these carriages. And it says just use a quarter turn. Next, use the uh, four millimeter key. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, to loosen the 16 screws holding Y1 and Y2 uh, rail rails to the end plates. That's, that's these things right here. And I guess they want us to go ahead and and loosen them all up. I believe they're all loose. I'll check them here in a second. And it says again, just a quarter turn will do. So I'll go check them real quick. I'll be right back. Yep, I was correct. I just went and checked them and they are all loose. And uh, I was looking at this, so <laughs> with the tension of this belt, this uh, belt on there, that's uh, that's putting quite a bit of force on this plate. I don't know how easily it's gonna adjust, but Okay, so uh, the next step is to slide the X-Rail all the way to the front of the Shapeoko. The Y1 and Y2 carriages should be touching the front end plates as shown in figure 9-1. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's pretty clever. They, we're going to square it. We're going to square it with itself. <laughs> I was expecting to pull out a square, but uh, no, we're going to square it with itself. That's perfectly okay. I'm gonna have to put the phone down to pull this thing forward. I don't want to put a big torque on it and mess it up, so I'll be back. The gantry pulled all the way forward, so the Y1 carriage is hitting the the front plate of the Y1 rail. And uh, yeah, you can see right here, it's nice and flush. And uh, there's no gaps, very nice. And if we come over here, oh, we got a little bit of a gap. I know, I'm sorry, it's hard to see. It's it's the light, my camera. Anyway, uh, I think you can see that. Yeah, see, see off in there? Anyway, so there's a gap right there that we need to close. So since I'm working by myself, I can't really hold the, the X-Rail while I'm tightening all the bolts up. So I'm gonna invoke one of the red-green rules and uh, if it moves and it's not supposed to move, use duct tape. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna duct tape the shape oko. I'm gonna put some right here to hold this closed, and I'm gonna go ahead and put some over here to hold that. You know, make sure that doesn't open up while I'm tightening everything up. So uh, let me get the duct tape on, and uh, and we'll read the instructions. Okay, so before I duct tape it, I was sitting there thinking to myself, I was going, yeah, you know, you know, taping it and holding it, but if it has you know, some back pressure and I go to tighten it, it's just going to, I think, bounce back into the same shape it is because I haven't really adjusted anything. And the reason why I don't think it just readily adjusts is because of all the tension on these belts. So <laughs> this is not in the manual and this is my the way I'm doing it. So what I did is I, I put I put one hand on this guy, another hand on this guy, and and uh, let's see if I can do this. And I torqued it. I torqued it like this. 
gently. <laughs> and I just kept, I just kind of kept torquing it and, and I kind of would give it a little wiggle, 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 torque, torque, wiggle, 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 torque, torque. And I'm torquing it this way, like this, right? So I'm trying to get the X axis, I'm sorry, the Y2 axis and the Y1 axis to both, when I, when I pull this thing flush, they, they're both, they both stay, they're both, there's no gaps. Basically like this, see, no gap, no gap. And, and where I don't need the duct tape, right? So, so before there was a gap there and if I, if I pulled it with my hand, if I pulled it like this and let go of it, that gap would come right back. And so I thought, well, I don't think that's, pro that's right. Um, I'm, I was thinking as soon as I tighten this thing up, it's gonna just bounce back. So I did what I just told you. And now they, they both sit flush without me having to hold it. I am still gonna put the duct tape on, so while I'm tightening it, it, it doesn't move. I just wanted to let you know. Okay, so I basically did the same thing. I didn't wanna bore you with it. I just slid it all the way back. There was hardly any gappage. Um, I mean, just a, a hair on the Y1 side there, so I kinda did the, you know, a little bit of twisty action there until it would lay flat. One thing I did notice though is is when I was rolling it back, and I didn't have this, or I didn't feel this on the front, but when it hit that that little extra piece of, uh, that folded under uh, piece of belt, let me see if we can get a better look at it over here. Yeah, see that? See this folded under piece of belt right there? It actually stopped and and became a lot, a lot harder to roll up. I guess this, this, it, this wheel had to roll up over it, which kind of makes me think, you know, maybe I have the the wheels too tight, or I, I, you know, I didn't have that. I didn't see that on the front, and they and they have about the same amount of, you know, <laughs> I don't want to call it slack, but yeah, same amount of slack, I guess, folded up underneath there. So yeah, I'm not sure. I might have to check that those, how tight those wheels are, but. I mean, uh, I guess they are, they are fairly tight. I mean, you can see that screws up pretty close to the top. Maybe I, maybe I'll check that. They don't, yeah, so, sorry, you can't hardly see because of the, the background light. But uh, anyway, um, they don't tell you how to tell if they're too tight. Uh, maybe that's the tell. <laughs> if it can't go over that, that uh, slack right there. But anyway, um, we're still squaring it up. I'm gonna go ahead and, and tighten everything up, roll it to the front and make sure it's still square and call it good. Okay, I rolled it up to the front and everything squared up beautifully. Uh, yeah, very nice, very nice. So, and uh, yeah, I see why I didn't run into that problem in the front because this idler pulley doesn't, doesn't go that far. So uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. I hope it doesn't cause any problems with it. It, it is kind of uh, tough to roll over. So uh, I might I might go ahead and loosen <laughs> that back one a little bit. I don't know. I don't know which is worse, twisting or having to go over that hump. I guess uh, I don't know. I, I might try it later. Let's finish. Let's finish the the. We'll finish first, and then then we'll look at the other stuff. So uh, okay. So to complete the assembly. Uh, we use a three millimeter hex key to tighten the 18 screws uh, holding the MDF base plates to the rest of the base frame. And then uh, then we'll be done. Very good. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. Got them all tightened up and uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't see anything. Everything looks nice and straight and level and well organized. And if it runs as good as it looks, we should we should uh, be able to produce some pretty nice stuff. And, uh, and I was looking at this, and if you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not. Maybe if I bring it down here with me. I don't know if you can see, but in that wheel right there, you can see that, yeah, you can see there's a gap underneath there. So that thing's not tightened down too much because it's, 
I figured if it was tightened down too much, it would be flexing this wheel. You know, would, the gap wouldn't be very big. And it looks looks the same on the bottom. Oops. I don't like I said. I'm I'm afraid to just crank this thing because you can only turn it one way, which means I'll have to tighten it even more to loosen it. And I don't want to break the plastic wheel, so I uh, I think I'll just leave it the way it is. I I didn't over tighten it. I know uh, when I first put it together, but who knows with all the all the tightening and stuff and uh oh by the way uh yeah when we tightened all the bolts up all the belts did loosen up <laughs> yeah so uh so depending on how tight your belts were you might have to come back and and readjust Oop, sorry and you might have to come back and readjust them because yeah as soon as i even though i i i if you remember from i don't remember what video it was several days ago I said, yeah, tighten everything up and back it off a quarter turn, quarter to half. We should have been fairly tight, but it still was enough to loosen this belt up some. So anyway, we can always tighten it back up, right? So, all right, very good. Well, uh, there will be a following video on the software and everything else, but for now, we're done. Excellent. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.